When you start to get fancier with your videos, masking is very, very important. So in this video, we're gonna go over how the heck masking works in DaVinci Resolve and the edit page, the color page, and Fusion. And we also have some sample footage that you can download if you wanna follow along. There's a link in the top line of the description. So let's start out with the very, very basics. What the heck is a mask? A mask is a way to select part of an image so that you can change just maybe inside the mask or maybe outside of the mask. Sometimes it's applied to a specific effect, like a color correction, and sometimes it's used to kind of cut out an image. So one of the most kind of basic ways to mask something is just a simple crop. And so here in the edit page, if you select an image, then it'll populate the inspector with its properties. And the second little section here is called cropping. And if we click on that and twirl that down, we have these controls to crop our image. So I can crop the left, the right, the top, the bottom, and I can even change the softness to make the edges a little bit blurrier. So even though we're not necessarily kind of drawing a mask, it's kind of the same idea as a mask and that we're only putting the image on the screen within this rectangle and everywhere else is transparent. Now, if we want to do a little bit fancier version of this, maybe we aren't looking to crop this in a rectangle or maybe we just want to have a little bit more control over this rectangle rather than adjusting the sides here. We could draw a mask either in the Fusion or the Color page to do that same kind of thing. So I could quickly just jump into the Fusion page. And even if you don't know a lot about Fusion, you could just do what I do. You can make sure that your media in one is selected and then just click on this rectangle here and that'll add a rectangle mask. Then you can move this around like this, adjust the corners, and it's maybe a little bit more intuitive than cropping it because you, you, know, you can kind of move it around, it's a little bit. And then when you're done, you just switch back over to the edit page and we have this cropped clip. Of course, there's a ton more things that you can do in Fusion. If we select this rectangle node, that's gonna give us a lot of controls over here in the inspector. And we can do fun stuff like change the corner radius and have this kind of be a rounded rectangle. We could soften it, we can rotate it. We could even do stuff like uncheck solid and push up the border width and make our mask just kind of the stroke of this rectangle which for certain things, maybe you wanna do that. But this basic kind of idea is really just how masks work in Fusion. You're making a shape and then you're either doing stuff inside or outside of that shape. Now, depending on what you connect this mask to, that's what decides what stuff you're doing. So here we're connecting this to our media in, which is just our video clip. And so when we plug this rectangle into that blue input, it's saying to draw that video clip to the screen, but only inside of this rectangle. Pretty much any time that you use a mask, you're saying do whatever you're thinking about doing just inside of the mask or just outside of the mask. We're limiting some kind of operation to just be inside or outside that shape. So we could do something a little bit different. I'll just unhook this rectangle mask. So it's just sitting there and let's select our media in one and then just click on this little half sunshine thing. This will bring up a brightness and contrast node. And so let's maybe take the saturation down Maybe we'll take the contrast up a little bit. We'll have this nice black and white looking image, but we can apply this color correction just inside of this rectangle by taking the output of this rectangle and plugging that into the blue input of the brightness and contrast. And look at that. Now we have that same crop that's happening to our rectangle, but it's just this black and white effect. And this works in a very similar way in the color page. Let's get rid of this stuff. Switch back over to the edit page I'm gonna right click and reset our fusion composition just so we don't have to think about fusion stuff. Now we just have a regular clip and I'll switch over to the color page. Here we have all of our clips from our timeline. I'm just working on the first clip so I'll just close our clips here. And now over here on the right, we have a kind of similar node graph to what we had in fusion. If you're not into nodes or if nodes feel intimidating to you, don't worry about it too much. But we can do similar things here in the color page. So for instance, let's say we want this to be really, really blue and maybe some high contrast, that kind of thing. Maybe desaturate it a little bit. Let's make it even bluer. Yes, we have this blue color grade and we can limit this color to a mask. All we have to do is go to this little icon here and that will bring up in our center palette on my screen, our windows palette. A window in the color page is just what you call a mask. It's just the name for a mask in the color page. But the idea is the same thing. So again, I could click on this square and we have this effect kind of limited to this rectangle. Now the rectangles work a little bit differently in the color page. You can actually change any of these corners, which may or may not be a reason to use or not use a window in the color page. 
but you know, we have a circle window like this and we can easily resize this and position it and change its aspect and rotate it. And if we grab these little pink handles here, we can change the softness of the mask. I'm gonna make this just a little bit stronger just so we can really see what's going on. There we go. So this is kind of a dark blue color grade and that's only happening within the mask. In fact, anything that we do in the primaries or the curves or any of our color grading palettes down here is going to be limited to the mask for this node. So what's cool is I'll just reset our grade here. We could do an initial grade of some kind. So I'll just kind of do some color here to the whole image. And so maybe we like something like this. And then I can right click on this node, add a node, add a serial node. And then in this node, I'm gonna do some special stuff, but I'm only going to do it within the mask. And so let's say I want to darken this wall a little bit. I can make the whole image really dark. I could take the maybe the gain and the gamma down a little bit. I could really darken this down but then I'm gonna limit it to the mask. So anything that I'm doing in this node, if I click on this number, I can turn off and on what this node is doing. Anything that's happening in this node, the combination of all the stuff that I'm doing in these color palettes, because that all lives in the node that's selected, any of that stuff is gonna be limited to my window. And so I'll show you another window here, this one right here, this is our gradient window. And what this does is it has whatever's happening in this node in full effect on this side of the line, and then it kind of fades out as it goes along this arrow. And so if I want it to happen on the left side of the screen, but not the right, I can do it this way. If I want a really harsh transition, I can push this arrow back like that. If I want a really soft transition, I can pull this arrow out. So that's just the softness of this line. And so I could do something like move this arrow this way and take this edge and put this right on the edge of my frame and I can kind of fade this out like this. And now I'm darkening this side of the screen in a very subtle way. So I'll just switch to a different palette here so it'll hide this overlay. And now we can see it's darker on this side and it kind of fades out. It's probably a little much. We might keep that a little bit more subtle in real life, but easier to see on the tutorial, right? And I'll just turn this off. We're just doing our whole color grade and then limiting it to a mask. And this is really the essential concept. You basically pick a thing to do, but then you only do it within the mask. And that's true on the color page as well as the fusion page and the edit page. Let's think about this. I'll just reset our color grade here, go back to the edit page. Now we just have our untouched clip. Again, even when we're cropping this, what we're telling Resolve to do is show this clip in the timeline, but I only want you to show it on the left side of the screen and we're gonna crop out the right side of the screen. So show this clip, but just right here. Let's reset all that. Infusion, switch this. I could do the same thing. Show this clip, but just right here. Switch back to edit, that's what we're doing. This same idea works with any node in the Fusion page or the color page. And so if I want to blur something, I can take this blur and just drag this in between the media in and media out, make it really blurry, but I just want it to be really blurry right there. And so now that blur effect is only happening within this mask, this circle mask that I added. And so if we want to do something like blur out her face, we could do that like this. That's the idea. And so that's really the essential concept that you need to understand about masks. Everybody overcomplicates these things. You're really just picking an area on screen to limit either an effect that you're doing to that image or another image that you're putting on top of it or where you're showing that image itself. And you can take the same concept and get totally crazy with it. So here on this clip, I've done a little bit of work in the Fusion page. I'll switch over to Fusion here. And let's say we like this shot, but we feel like it should be darker outside. We feel like it should be nighttime. Well, we can make a mask for these windows and we can darken only inside of the windows. So here's a little mask that I'm working on. And in Fusion, you can hit the A key to switch to alpha mode. And that's going to just show you the black and white selection for this mask. And so here's my mask, here's what it looks like. When we apply this mask to something, anything that is white is going to show whatever we wanna show and anything that is black is not going to show it. I made this with a series of masks that we're plugging into this background. So normally this background is just a red color, but I take this mask and I plug it into the blue input of this background, that's the mask input, and it limits where that background happens. See, this is the same concept. And then I can even use that as a mask for a color corrector. And so now we can look at the media out and look at this color corrector node, 
And my color correction that I'm doing is only happening within the mask. And so we have this really nice effect. And you'll notice here, if you look carefully, this mask isn't quite right. It really should be over her fingers and over her sleeves a little better. And so what we can do is we can combine masks. Now in Fusion, this is really easy. You just start with a mask and then you run it into another one and they combine. You can run it through another mask. And if you select the mask and go to paint mode and select subtract, that will take away that mask. And so we're taking away this mask as well and this one. And so these nodes, I can run them through another mask. Let's just select this last node and click polygon. And I'm gonna take our media out and just drag it up like that. And then with this polygon five selected, I can just click and drag and make a selection here for her sleeve. I'll make sure this paint mode says subtract like that. Maybe add a little soft edge. And you'll notice that this is moving. What I've done is I'm running all of these masks through a tracker, which is a subject for another video. If you wanna learn about trackers, let me know in the comments. But basically this kind of sticks to the image, but it doesn't do it perfectly. Right here, it's just a little bit off. And so by default, when you make a mask, a polygon mask in the fusion page, this shape is animated. And so if you grab the shape and you move it, it actually animates over time which is really great for stuff like this, where you're trying to make sure something looks good over time. So this is just warping this over time, which is going to give us a better trace of our sleeve. And then here she moves a lot. And so we can adjust this to kind of match the top of her sleeve and animate it to fit this shape over time. This process is called rotoscoping and it takes a long time and a lot of patience, but you can totally do it. And it's quite a bit of work, but once you go through it, then you can have a really nice animated mask of whatever you want to select or deselect. Now this could take a little bit more work, which I'm not gonna do on this video, but that's kind of the idea, is you would go through each little part and trace it out and animate that trace over time. You can combine those masks to be a selection for whatever you want to apply your effects or images to. In this case, just darkening those windows, and it works pretty well. Now, if you're not quite at this level and you don't understand stacking all these polygons and you're thinking, oh gosh, this is just so complicated. You might not be at that level yet and that's okay. This video is here just to show you the basics of mask and kind of how they work and a few different ways that you can use them in Resolve. And once you use kind of some basic masks, you'll get more comfortable with it and you might be willing to jump into something a little bit more complex. There's no rush, you can take it slow. If you wanna practice some masking with this footage, there's a link down below and I'll also put a link right there, okay? I hope this is a helpful video for you. What else do you wanna learn? What, what, what do you need? How about you tell me in the comments, okay? I'll see you soon.